Hi, and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that have been linked with a January transfer move to Arsenal. Going to start off talking again today about Andrea Bellotti. Now, Bellotti, what, what, what is this? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's really confusing this, right? As I said yesterday, the rumour has it, and the sporting director of Torino came out and backed up the rumour and said that Arsenal made a £56 million bid for the striker. The striker who scored 14 goals in 19 appearances, he's made a £56 million bid. It came out in the independent newspaper yesterday that Arsenal are denying that they made this bid. Um, and then I see comments today from Bellotti where he told um, Tutto Sport, which is um, a publication over there in Italy, he goes, I have to continue like this. He's talking about the, the goals he's been scoring and how well he's been playing. I have to continue like this. I cannot let all this get to my head. And of Arsenal, did they move for Belletti? Uh, Belotti? <laughs> I mean, why, why would um, the sporting director come out and say this? And it's a real interesting one. Um, £56 million, pound. he's a youngster. He's uh, doing really, really well this season. You know, they really do rate him highly over there in Italy. Could Arsenal really have moved in for him? What was the, the, the bid for now? Or was it that they want to take him in the summer? Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel that there's definitely something in this. Um, not sure if maybe it was, you know, sort of maybe for January, because as I said, we're we, in the striker department. We're flush at the moment. But I don't know. It's a real strange one. And could it be preparation just in case, say, for instance, somebody like an Alexis decided to leave? that, you know, they're then looking into getting a striker. I, I, I don't know. It's, 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 a, it's a real strange one because it's not often you'd hear the sporting director of the team come out and say, yeah, listen, we turned down a bid for it. It's not like they're trying to sell him at the moment. They want to keep him at least to the end of the season um, to Reno because they know he's an important player. So it just seems weird to me, you know, Yes, I know sometimes these things can be done to push the price up, but why would he do it now? And I don't know, it's just a real strange one, this Belletti or Belotti uh, situation. Um, on the striker front, good news on Olivia Giroud. Olivia Giroud's been having a fantastic season this year. It's been a good servant to us over the years. I know he divides opinion sometimes, <clears throat> but this season, basically, he's been saving us in so many games. Man United away, Preston... Bournemouth, you know, he's been excellent this season and he's he's really showed good character, a lot of mental strength and some really fantastic finishing um, this season and really good link-up play, which we know he's always had that. Um, he told uh, French TV, um, re with regards to his contract, he said, these are his quotes, we're on the verge of reaching an agreement for an extension. Um, it's also a sign of confidence that I want to continue my adventure here in this Arsenal family, and I feel very, very good here. That's fantastic news as far as I'm concerned that we're securing um, Olivia Giroud on a contract extension. We need to secure some of those others as well, and we know who they are. Ozil, we need to secure. Alexis Sanchez, we need to secure. You know, Jack Wilshire, we need to secure. All these guys are 18 months left, as I keep saying every single day. But it's good that Giroud, hopefully that could be like, cause a domino effect and we can start to see some of the other you know big time players major names deciding to sign here at Arsenal but it looks like Giroud will be signing a new contract extension with Arsenal which is great news as I said particularly when you consider the form he's in his experience he was a captain at the weekend so good news on um, Olivier Giroud um, on the other side of the spectrum um, Gideon Zalalem youngster 19 years of age Big time prospect um, at Arsenal, highly uh, you know thought of throughout the club, but he just hasn't made it. Um, he was out on loan last season at Rangers, bit of a mixed loan spell. I spoke to some Rangers fans and they were like, you know what, very skillful that, but a bit lightweight. Um, Zalalem on the verge of moving to Borussia Dortmund, and not on a loan move, on a permanent move. His contract with Arsenal is up at the end of the season. Um, Again, another contract that's kind of been allowed to run down. And it looks like we're going to be use, losing another one of our exciting young talents at Arsenal to the German League, Bundesliga. Um, Zalalim, 
on his way to Borussia Dortmund. And it's, it's really, really sad. You know, I mean, I, I, I really love when um, the young players can come through like an Alex Iwobi and, you know, really make it at Arsenal. Um, but unfortunately, it does look like it's going to be the case here for Zalalem. He's going to have to ply his trade elsewhere. Um, and he looks like he will be heading to Borussia Dortmund. Um, there's also rumours today about Jack Wilshire. Now, the rumour has it that Manchester City have um, asked Arsenal to let them know about the availability of Jack Wilshire. And, and they're saying, you know, if he becomes available, um, we want to know first. So we've got first refusal on him. I mean, even things like that. When I, when I read things like that, I'm like, we're a big club. You know, Man City are asking us you know, about first, you know, can we get first refusal on one of our star players? I mean, listen, it could just be paper talk, but, you know, I, I, I just feel that, you know, we, why are we so easy pickings when it comes to transfers? Jack Wilshere should just be out of bounds to all, you know, teams right now. I mean, you couldn't go to, I don't know, Manchester United and say, you know, yeah, let us know we can get first refusal on Marcus Rashford, could you? I mean, I don't know, man. It's just, when I hear things like that, it's very, very frustrating. And again, the Jack Wilshire thing, 18 months left. I've said it so many times. If he has a great season at Bournemouth, then, you know, he's in the last year, might turn around and say, well, hold on a minute. Am I starting every week? If not. And then the other thing, whilst I'm on this, I just remembered this and I, and I forgot to bring this up yesterday. I'd be really interested to see what the loan deal is with Bournemouth. Now, I don't know if you guys have seen this. Nathan Ake, who's on loan to Bournemouth from Chelsea, has been recalled. He's been having a fan fantastic season. He was at Watford last year. He was brilliant. He was at, he's at Bournemouth now. Brilliant again. Um, in the Liverpool game, he was outstanding. He was really good against us as well. Chelsea, who... You know, a bit light in the defensive department. They're like, well, well, why are we buying players? We've got this guy. He's on a season-long loan, but they've recalled him. I was chatting to a football agent last night. I was trying to find out from him, you know, the situation on Jack Wilshere. He wasn't sure, but he said to me that most, nearly all loan deals, when it's a season-long deal, you do have the option to recall that player. If that's the case, we should be recalling Jack Wilshere. We're short in that area right now. Santi's going to be out. Let's face it, we're not going to see Santi for at least a couple of months. He's not back in training yet. He's still recuperating. Achilles injury, you know, hard to recover from those. Why are we not recalling? They're recalling Ake from the same club, Bournemouth. Why are we not recalling Jack Wilshire? And if we're not recalling Jack Wilshire because we can't, why didn't we have that written in? to the contract because as I said, I spoke to an agent last night and he said to me, nearly every time you see uh, a loan deal for a season, right, that means that you do have the option to recall. A lot of teams won't do it because they'll, you know, in good faith, they'll say, but we need, Jack Wilshere would be perfect for us right now and he's playing well as well, he's injury free. Why are we not recalling Jack Wilshire, I, you know, I did this. I, I'm. I would really love to know this. I would really love to know the status of his contract with Bournemouth for the season. Because, as I said, if the recall is in there, bring him home. Bring him home fast. Uh, and on the Jack Wilshire thing, finally, um, Urzel apparently wants to get the number ten number. He still wants it. He's uh, said in that same interview that he did with the German magazine Kicker that has caused so much controversy um, that, um, you know, he'd like to get that number, but the numbers is available at the moment, but obviously Jack will be coming back, but recall Jack. <laughs> All right, let's get into a couple of your comments here. HGSFIC Slighted says, Hey Robbie, love the show. So I believe that we do need a long-term replacement for Cazola. But um, James Rodriguez and Isco are starting to play more often um, for Real Madrid. Um, and he's saying that, if not, why don't we get Pae? He'd leave now for, um, for Arsenal. Um, or we could go with two up front and play Shaka um, at a CDM position. So, you know, there's a lot, a lot of thought on 
that about bringing him in. But I just think, you know, we got the guy right there at Bournemouth. Bring him back. Um, Kieran O'Neill says, uh, people are saying to let Wenger go without even thinking about repercussions. Look what happened with Manchester United. Sir Alex goes and they get into two very... They're getting two very decent managers and splash a load of money on half-decent good players and they're, they're worse than they've been in the last 20 to 30 years. He says, keep Wenger, but get in a director of football. Um, and uh, Abdullah says, um, Ozil knows no other manager would tolerate his lack of work rate and laziness. Um, this is pertaining to yesterday, of course, on the show where we were saying that um, Ozil is saying that, you know, he wants to know the situation regarding, you know, Arsene Wenger. You know, that's one of the sort of sticking points on the contract. He wants to know what's going on. Um, there has been a lot of people suggesting that, you know, yeah, he wants to know that because it's an easy ride for him. I thought, God, that's ridiculous. It's not an easy ride for him. Obviously, it's the guy that brought him into the club. It's the guy that he enjoys working for. He wants to know what's happening in the future. Is Wenger going to be there? Is it going to be Simeone? Is it going to be you? Are we going to still, you know, going forward, will we still play the same style of football? But, you know, there's a lot of questions unanswered for him. You can't blame him for asking those questions. Um, and uh, Awash, last one here, um, he says, uh, bring Simeone and Griezmann. How amazing would it be to have two strikers of amazing qualities ripping defences apart? Um, would be great. I think, first of all, we even know, need to know what the situation is going to be at Arsenal. Um, that's really, really interesting. What do you guys think on that Jack Wilshire thing? Do you think we should be recalling Jack Wilshire? Leave it in the comments below. Thanks for watching the show and we'll be back around about the same time tomorrow.